thank you yes, and Lord, praise Lord, you and give you honor and glory, Lord. 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 Father, we pray, Father God, that your spirit will rest upon us through this service this evening. Lord, bless the reading of your word, Father. And Lord, give us the words to say, Father. And Lord, we pray, Father God, that your will be done. And Lord, we ask you, Father, remember all of those that are sick and afflicted, those that need healing in their bodies. Lord, Father, those that are lost and undone, we pray, God, that you will save them and deliver them from their bondage of sin, Lord. And Father, we just ask you to remember those, Father, who have lost their loved ones through death. And Lord, we know there's a void and an emptiness in the home and in their life, Lord. But Father, you can feel that longing and that emptiness in their heart. And we trust in you, Lord, and we thank you, Father, for your many blessings. For we ask this to be done in the name of the Lord Jesus. Amen. Through these times, there is times of discouragement. There, there's times that uh, people become depressed. Uh, there's times that uh, a lot of things happen in people's lives because they can't deal with the pressure and the situation uh, that is upon us. It's, it's something that uh, people haven't experienced. I haven't experienced it. Uh, you haven't experienced it. It brings fear. Uh, it causes people to become depressed. Uh, but through all of this, we all need words of encouragement. Because of the situations that's happening other than the coronavirus, uh, there's a lot of anger. Uh, there's a lot of things that we have to endure and, and just keep ourselves in prayer before the Lord and trust that He will take care of us. And sometimes when things happen and there's mass destruction, we wonder, can we stay encouraged? Can things get better? But so I want to try to encourage us tonight. Those that will be watching the video, I pray that you'll find something there that uh, will encourage you. It's easy to be discouraged. We all are familiar with discouragement. There's times in our lives that we have faced discouragement. But David said in Psalms 27, and we're going to read there in Psalms, In Psalms 27, with verse 14, David gives us some advice, and that is to wait on the Lord. You know, we get over-anxious sometimes. We, we want something, we want it right then, and we think that it should happen in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, which it can, because there's nothing impossible with God. God can just... As quick as a flash of lightning, God can change things. He changes things in our lives. He changes our situations. But the important thing is that we must wait on the Lord. While we're waiting on the Lord, be of good courage. And He shall strengthen thy heart. Wait, I say, on the Lord. <laughs> And how many are really waiting on the Lord to work out these problems and this situation? We want a quick fix. We want a quick answer. But we must learn and be patient to wait upon the Lord. In the 30th Psalms, verse 5, David said, For his anger endures but a moment, and his favor is life. Weeping may endure for a night, but joy cometh in the morning. And again, it seems like that this verse of Scripture have, comes up very frequently in the last several messages, and that is in Isaiah 43 and 2. When God said, When thou passest through the waters, I will be with thee. And through the rivers, they shall not overflow thee. When thou walkest through the fire, 
Thou shalt not be burned, and neither shall thy flame kindle upon thee. These are words from God. Words to encourage us that when we are going through the waters, He's going to be with us. When it seems like that life itself has become a great river of flooding river, and we wonder how are we going to meet our needs, how are we going to make it, just remember we're not there in the midst of that river alone. God is with us, and He will see us through. He said, even through the rivers, they shall not overflow thee. Otherwise, it will not overtake us. It may seem like it, but it won't overtake us. When we walk through the fire, when things get, over, when things get heated up, we'll not be burned, neither shall the flames kindle upon thee, he said. But Peter said in 1 Peter 4, 12 and 13, Beloved, think it not strange concerning the fiery trials, which is to try you as though some strange thing happened unto you. We all are going to have trials. Some are heavier than others. Some are stronger trials, fiery trials. But what do we do when this happens to us? What does Peter say to do? But rejoice inasmuch as ye are partakers of Christ's suffering that when his glory shall be revealed you may be glad also with exceedingly joy. Paul had a great determination. Paul had some strong faith. When he was ministering to the Romans and in Romans chapter 8, verses 38 and 39, Paul had this to say, For I am persuaded. First of all, let me ask you, Are you persuaded that we have a God that is far greater and bigger than all of our problems? Is He greater than any mountain? Isn't he deeper than any valley that we can go through? Isn't he swifter than the wings of an eagle? Paul said, I'm persuaded. I hope you're persuaded to understand and to know and to comprehend we serve a mighty, mighty big God. Because Paul said, neither death nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come. No height, no depth, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Oh, isn't it wonderful to know that we have a God that loves us? God loves us. It's not God's will that any should perish. But it's God's will that we all come to repentance. That we come to understand that if we put our trust in Him, if we serve Him, even though through our trials and our tribulations and the storms of life as they prevail and the things of this world surround us, can I persuade you or are you persuaded that none of these not even death nor life nor angels nor principalities nor powers nor things present nor things to come nor height nor death nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God yes. which is in Christ Jesus Isaiah gives us a scripture, a verse, a scripture, a word of encouragement, of encouragement. He tells us to fear not. 
Fear not, for I am with thee. Be not dismayed, for I am thy God. Is he your God? Who is your God? Is your God an idol of stone and wood? Is your God an idol of possessions, worldly possessions? Is your God someone that maybe is close to you? But do you know my God? My God who is the creator of all things. The God who said in the beginning, let there be light. And there was light. Amen. Everything that he spoke, it appeared. And it was made. It was created. That's my God. My God is the God that controls the universe. The heavens, the stars, the earth, and the fullness of it. Under the earth, in the earth, everywhere. My God reigns. Yes, sir. Is that the God you serve? <laughs> well, glory to God. Fear not, for I am with thee. Be not dismayed, for I am thy God. And yes. I will strengthen thee. Yea, I will help thee. Oh, what good news. What, what encouragement. What else could we ask for? When we're weak in faith, when we're weak in spirit. What? He said, I'll strengthen you. When you're troubled and you have not anything and you barely are making it and you're in need, he said, I'll help thee. Yea, I will uphold thee with the right hand of my righteousness. Amen. And Deuteronomy 33 and 27 says that the eternal God is thy refuge. And thank God I understand that. I know that. And underneath are the everlasting arms. And he shall thirst out the enemy from before thee and shall say, destroy them. Well, praise God. <laughs> praise the Lord. We ought to be rejoicing. We ought to be yes. shouting. Because the eternal God is our refuge. And underneath him are the everlasting arms. And he saith he shall thirst out the enemy from before thee and shall say, destroy them. Yes, Lord. Deuteronomy 33, 27. <laughs> well, praise God. Well, glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Psalms 118 and 17 says, I shall not die but live and declare the works of the Lord. Amen. He's talking about spiritual death. We all are going to die physically. The body will die. The soul will leave the tabernacle that it's dwelt in. It will go back to God the Father who gave it. But it's going to live somewhere throughout eternity and eternity is forever. And that is why God has made man a free more agent to where we can choose each day whom we want to serve. Yes, amen. We can serve God or we can serve the devil. We have two choices. We can do good or we can do evil. But what is the reward at the end? When death has come and the physical body has, tabernacle has failed and is no longer alive and the soul and the spirit has left the body, where does it go? Back to God who gave it. If it's a saved soul, a redeemed soul, it goes to be with Jesus. But if it's never been born again, it is cast into outer darkness where there's weeping and wailing and gnashing of teeth Amen. and is no rest. 
But for the saints of God, they're asleep in Jesus. They're resting, waiting for the judgment. And at the great and final judgment, there's two things that we will hear. And I pray that I may hear my God say, Well done, thy good and faithful servant. Glory to God. Enter into the joys of the Lord. It would be bad to hear the words, Depart from me, you worker of iniquity. I never knew you. Amen. And then your soul was cast into hell, into the lake of fire, along with the devil and the beast and the false prophet. There through eternity in nothing but torment. But thank God, if you know God today, if you know Jesus Christ as your Savior, if you know the Son of God, you will know God the Father. You will know God the Holy Spirit. Because the eternal God is our refuge. Amen. Underneath are the everlasting arms. He will thirst out the enemy from before us and say, destroy me. Psalms 118 and 17 says, I shall not die but live and declare the works of the Lord. Philippians 4.13 tells us that we can do all things through Christ which strengthens us. Then there's another word of encouragement of encouragement. Found in Psalms 31 and 24. Be of good courage. And he shall strengthen your heart. All ye that hope in the Lord. And see, in a lot of these verses, a lot of these scriptures in the Word of God, we find little keys that unlocks little treasures. And in this verse of scripture, the key to this is, yes, we can be of good courage. Yes, He will strengthen our heart. But whose heart? All of them that hope in the Lord. Is your hope in the Lord? There's the key. Again, we're reminded in Isaiah's prophecy of uh, chapter 40, verse 31, but they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary, and they shall walk and not faint. We can't fail if we wait upon God. But if we get hasty, and we get in a hurry, and we don't have patience to wait, that's where we get into trouble. When we think that we can handle it ourselves, we get into trouble. We have to wait upon the Lord. My, may I encourage you, don't be discouraged. Don't be impatient. Wait upon the Lord. Because yes. Philippians 4 and 8 tells us that finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are a good report, if there be any virtue, if there be any praise, think on these things. Yes. And in closing, Isaiah 51 and 11 says, Therefore the redeemed of the Lord shall return and come with singing unto Zion, and everlasting joy shall be upon their head, yes. and they shall obtain gladness and joy, and sorrow and mourning shall flee away. Our day is coming. It's coming, my friend. But see, the other key here again is the redeemed of the Lord. If you haven't been redeemed by the plan of God's salvation, if you have never repented of your sin, 
and told God that you were sorry for all the bad things that you've done in your life. And if you've not come to the knowledge and the understanding that Jesus Christ is the Son of God, that Jesus Christ died for you, He died for me, He paid our sin debt. And we have to believe that. Because that was our redemption. Our redemption is of the Lord. Jesus Christ, the anointed of God the Father. And He died for the whole world. He didn't die for a certain individual or a certain race or creed or color or whatever. He died for the whole world. But remember, the redeemed of the Lord shall return. And that's a wonderful blessing. <laughs> if you've never been redeemed, you'll never return. But thank God, Brother Dockery, we're going to return. We're going to come back with singing and design and everlasting joy is going to be up on our head. And we're going to take gladness and joy and sorrow and mourning shall flee away. It'll never be known. <laughs> that word will never be in that vocabulary there. Isn't that wonderful? Yes, Lord. Isn't that wonderful, Pete? The eternal God is our refuge. And underneath are His everlasting arms. And He shed. We don't have to worry whether he will or whether he won't, but it says he shall thirst out the enemy from before thee and shall say, destroy thee. Isn't that wonderful? I hope that I have been able to encourage you. When we look around and we listen to the news, we see things that are on the TV, things that are happening, yes, it is discouraging. But just wait on the Lord. Just try to be of good courage and know that God is in control. It's His world. It's His creation. He will tend to it as he sees necessary. And remember this. If you're going through the waters, if you're going through the fire, if you're going through fiery trials, just rejoice. Because we are partakers of Christ's suffering. And His glory will be revealed. And just remember that Paul said, I'm persuaded. Are you persuaded? That neither death nor life nor angels nor principalities nor powers nor things present nor things to come nor height nor death nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God which is in Christ Jesus. And in closing, let me remind you this that was spoken by the prophet Isaiah. And these are the words from our eternal God. Fear not, for I am with thee. Be not dismayed, for I am thy God. I will strengthen thee. And yea, I will help thee. And yea, I will uphold thee with the right hand of my righteousness. Our Father in heaven, yes, Lord, we, bless you. we come before you this afternoon. We pray that Almighty God that God you may your word find a place in yes, some Lord. precious heart and soul today. God, have you made fun, have you Lord, help that one, Father. Have mercy, O oh Lord. Everybody. That's discouraged. 
Encourage them, Lord. Help them, Father, to wait upon you. Let them hear the words that have been spoken tonight. And Lord, may they find peace and joy and happiness in salvation. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. And Father, we look for a harvest of precious souls. Lord, that there will be men, women, and children saved, sanctified, baptized in the Holy Spirit, and added to the church daily, that they will not have to face an eternal God lost and undone, but they may know the joy of serving God. May they understand and receive Jesus Christ as their Savior, our mediator, our intercessor. Have your way, Lord, in each heart and life. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Brother Joe, would you dismiss us from the service? Yes, Lord, have thy own way, we pray. Lord, your will be done in our lives. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.